48, the comment for proper 19. <coughs> The Lord be with you, and with you. together we pray. O oh God, God, without you we are not able to please you. Wonderful grant that your Holy Spirit may all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Word of God written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 4, beginning at verse 11 to 12, 20 to 28. Jeremiah, chapter 4, 11 to 12, 22 to 28. At that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward my people, not to winnow or cleanse. A wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish. They do not know they are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and look, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and look, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked and lo, and the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in the ruins before the Lord. Before his fierce anger, for thus says the Lord, The whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this, the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purpose, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. The appointed psalm, Psalm 14. Find the psalm on page 483, Psalm 40. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. The Lord looked down from heaven upon us all. Everyone has proved faithless. All alive have turned back. Have they not knowledge all those evildoers? See how they tremble with fear. Their aim is to confirm the plans of the afflicted. Oh, that Israel deliverance will come out of Zion. When the Lord has stored the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and be Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Son, and shall be forever. Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, 
a prosecutor and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed me with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, the mortal, invisible, the only God, be honored and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word.
Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 15, reading verse 1, 2 to 10. Glory to Christ our At that time, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and the neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and the neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of Christ. There is Christ. drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Words taken from today's Gospel, Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. This man receives sinners and eats with them. That's what the Pharisees and scribes said about Jesus. So how does that strike you? How does that strike me? What do we hear in those words? Are they words of complaint and disagreement or ones of hope and invitation? At one point, the words of the scribes and Pharisees are a statement of fact, because indeed, that's what Jesus did. He ate with sinners and tax collectors. Looking at it another way, they are words of accusation and an indictment and a judgment in the eyes and words of the scribes and Pharisees. To them, Jesus is guilty of violating the law. Ironically, their words are a statement of the gospel. They have just spoken the good news. <clears throat> Jesus not only welcomes the sinners, he eats with them, which means he has a relationship with them and has accepted them. He is on their side. Jesus, throughout the gospel stories, 
Jesus always chooses to hang out with the wrong kind of people. Tax collectors, sinners, prostitutes, etc. Now in those days, the Pharisees and scribes were the religious leaders. They were the teachers and rulers of the Jewish synagogues. They were the religious watchdogs as it were making sure that everyone was living according to God's laws, according to how they understood those laws. The scribes were those men who spent their days copying the Old Testament. They were like copy machines, who it was thought they knew the, the scriptures inside out and so were qualified to write them. On the other hand, the tax collectors and sinners were men and women who were considered as a riffraff of the society. They not were not respected in the communities. <coughs> they were considered as immoral and most often treated with contempt by those in religious circles. They were even looked on as worse than prostitutes and lepers. But nevertheless, they listened to Jesus. We hear this in the gospel. They listened to Jesus. This may lead us to ask, first of all, why did the tax collectors and sinners want to hear Jesus? Secondly, why did their coming to Jesus upset the Pharisees and scribes so much? contemplate these questions, we could also ask, what would the church have to do to be attractive to sinners today? And why would their presence be offensive to the leaders of our churches? As we listen, let us not lose sight of the fact that we are all sinners, saved by grace. So we are no better than the tax collectors and sinners because the Bible tells us in Romans 3 and 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What we need to do is to sit with those who we consider as sinners, talk with them and identify with them. And we must do it genuinely out of a love for them. We don't need to be hypocrites, my brothers and sisters. We don't need to show them a good face, befriend them, and then go behind them and criticize and ridicule them to the so-called righteous one. We need to show them that we are genuinely caring for them, even though others look at them as outcasts and of little or no importance. And my brothers and sisters, as church, we do this. We look down on those who come into our church from time to time looking rugged. And instead of welcoming them, we ignore them. We turn up our noses at them. We think they are not good enough to be in our church. News flash. We are no better than them. We are all God's creation. He made us all, whether we look nice or we look however, God has made us in his own image and in his likeness. So he loves us. We all belong to him. So when we walk through these doors, we don't frown on others and look down on them. We are one. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the love. Jesus died for all of us, not just for those of us who come to church every Sunday and we are holy and taking communion and so on, and those who just come in now and again, we think they are no good. Jesus died for all of us. Why? Because he loves us. Every word of scripture tells of God's love and compassion for all 
human beings. Not for some. For all of us. God is love. He is searching for the rejected sinner. He never stops looking for us. Because we are his. Just as the woman searched for her coins until she found it. Found them. Just as the um, shepherd looked for a lost sheep, <coughs> Jesus looks for us because we are his. Whether we believe that or not, we are his. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't belong to anybody else. The answer to why the Pharisees and scribes grumble may be similar to why we as church members grumble when those we consider sinners come into our churches. We feel threatened. We feel as if, if they get in too close, some, they may get more attention than those of us who are here all the time. We think they are not worthy of occupying a seat in the church. We worry about how it will look to the other self-righteous one. And yes, we are self-righteous when we condemn and treat others in this way. But we fail to understand that those we consider to be unworthy or beneath us are graciously accepted by God the Father. Also, my brothers and sisters, these are the whom we need to accept and encourage to be among us. This is the only way our church can flourish. Those of us who are here, we are settled, we are committed. <clears throat> but when we have others coming in, maybe for the first time, or the first time in a long time, or never, or coming and stopping and coming and stopping, we need to make sure they feel comfortable in our midst. <clears throat> Sorry. We are not just to befriend those who are here all the time because some of us brothers and sisters, we are only pure warmers. Mm -hmm. We come because, okay, from tradition, you know, my granny used to bring me, my mom used to bring me, so I'm coming. But I'm, do, I'm doing nothing else. I just come and I sit down. Sometimes I don't even take part in what is happening, but I come. Sometimes those people who we turn up our noses at are more Christian than us. <clears throat> we come, we go, we criticize. We only see the things that are wrong. And instead of helping to correct the wrong, we criticize and we condemn. We don't lift a finger to help right the wrong. My brothers and sisters, we need to examine ourselves and see where we fit in. Whether we are Pharisees, whether we are scribes, whatever we are, we need to look inward, not outward. And when we point our finger and at persons, all the others are pointing back at us. So we need to look at ourselves first before condemning and criticizing. We find it hard for them to accept Jesus' words. They're not our words, they're not my words. Jesus' words that said, there will be joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Luke 15 and 7. My brothers and sisters, human beings have not changed since the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. We love to sit back and judge others. We like to overlook our sins and call out the sins of others. We see the speck in other people's eyes, but refuse to see the log in ours. The Pharisees had stopped seeing their fellow men as both white. In their eyes, a person's worth was measured by their position in the community their social status, their appearance, and if they fail to conform to the culture, 
They were nothing in the eyes of the Pharisees. Sounds familiar? We do the same thing today, my brothers and sisters. Every one of us. Sometimes we may not be conscious of it, but we all do it. The Pharisees were self-appointed spokesmen for God in their eyes, and that's how God saw them too. Self-appointed spokesmen, but they were all wrong. Their only thing was to look for the fault in Jesus and see how they can discriminate against him, how they can get at him. And we do that today. Maybe not in the same way, but in some way or form, we do the same thing. But we are not damaged goods to God. We are not the refraff in God's eyes. We are precious. Jesus received sinners and he ate with them. The Pharisees and scribes had a problem with that. They thought it was scandalous behavior. How could the rabbi, how could Jesus spend time with outcasts? How could he identify with them? But what he is in fact doing is accepting them as they are and loving them. My brothers and sisters, are we loving each other or are we shunning each other? Are we turning up our noses at each other or are we trying to encourage each other to come closer to God? Remember, in whatever situation we find ourselves, God still loves us. For he is love. When others, even our own Christian brothers and sisters, reject us, love is still there. Jesus is still there. Know in your heart that God's love is reaching out to you. His love is reaching out to you, to you, to all of us. If others call you damaged goods or no good, if they scorn or ridicule you, if you, the members of the church reject you, don't worry. Jesus will never, ever reject you. He will never ridicule you. Remember, in everything he did, regardless to what the person looked like or who the person was, he never ridiculed them. He healed, he gave words of encouragement and love. Love is still there reaching out to each and every one of us. That's how valuable we are to Christ. That's how much we matter, each and every one of us. This man receives sinners and eats with them, says the scripture. These are some of the greatest words we could ever hope to hear about God and about Jesus. They do not discriminate for the simple reason that God is love. It is important, my brothers and sisters, to remember that in this gospel reading, the gift of love and grace is made available to all of us. Not to me, not to you, but to all of us. Not only to tax collectors and sinners not Pharisees and scribes, but to the self-righteous as well as the righteous. And all of us are sinners saved by grace. God's love and acceptance is for everybody, no exception. No matter what we have done, God still loves us. And if we believe this, my brothers and sisters, then we need to present ourselves in his house week by week. Partake of his body and blood. Meet with our brothers and sisters. Fellowship with them. Encourage the lapsed members to return and welcome them with open arms. 
everyone we must welcome even those who we consider to be our enemies and as christians the only enemy we should have is the devil and none of us in here is the devil <laughs> so we should not discriminate we should not turn up our noses we should not hate we should all live together as one my brothers and sisters if you believe this the ball is in your court the ball is in my court to score it or to kick it away remember my brothers and sisters there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. Amen.
the suffering and the sorrowful and the dying. And for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For us, for ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellence, the excellence of him who call us out of darkness into his marvelous light let us pray to the Lord O Lord, oh Lord O oh God accept the fervent praise of your people and mercy of your mercy O great one God and all the Lord to you for you are gracious
seven. Four zero seven.
uh, Friday the 23rd September there will be a mission service beginning at 6 p.m. St. Matthew's and Sunday the 25th of September will be our Feast of Title. The theme will be renewing our faith reaching out to our community. St. Sylvan's Harvest is scheduled for the 23rd of October 2022. Groups, various groups are please reminded to make preparation for our harvest. On Tuesday the 13th September, the choir practice at 5 p.m. with Mr. Daisy Halfway. Here, here. So here, 5 p.m., all those young ones who wish to join the choir. Also, I see we have a couple of young voices among us this morning. And it's a thing that is very much needed. We need to embrace our young with the seniors so please come out and join the, our choir with Mr. Daisley on the 13th of September when I, when I told you <laughs> so Tuesday evening 5 p.m. that will look clearer Tuesday evening 5 p.m. especially those who are living close by come out um, so far we received the sum of $4,057.67 from our Tipati, which we give God thanks. Mm -hmm. Collection last Sunday came up to $660, which we give God thanks. Our condolence. Uh, read us for our next Sunday, Miss Hannah Ledlo, Janelle McLean, Rose Bino. We pray for our sick and shut in. The names we have Florence Alexander, Rosalind Eager, Dina Brown, Norman Coffey, Alden Dick, Daisy Grant, Patricia Caru, Luenda Jones, Julie McLean, Leslie Thomas, Clarissa, Thom Clarissa Williams. Lenore Lewis, Don Jackson, our condolence goes out to Miss Monica Simmons, Monica Simon, a funeral will be at St. Matthias, Ibisham, uh, please listen on for the announcement, for the announcement, so you can know the date of the burial, but she will be at St. Matthias. St. Matthias. The lady that used to sit somewhere in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd like to take this time to welcome all who are visiting with us today, if they are being among us. A uh, special welcome. Dealing is dealing this one. Special welcome. Special welcome. So, we would just like to say special welcome to all those who are visiting. Oh, my brother, they are my visit. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, my name is again. But what Valentine? Caught me, caught me, not Junior. Caught me, Valentine. Welcome again. Good to have you among us. Birthday anniversary today or in the coming week. Please stand so that we can celebrate with you. Do you have any? Sean, birthday? Uh, this brings us to the end of our notices today. And um, for the young Jen Jennifer, I may like, may like to speak with the young before you go after, before, after service. So this brings us to the end of our notices. Lord be with you. Yes. Let us pray. Father and Lord, we ask your blessing upon our brother Sean this morning. 
We thank you for him, Lord, and we thank you for having him serving in your church. We pray, God, that he would have a great day. And may he continue to serve you, to trust you, and to love you. We pray, God, that whatever he does at school, he would open up his mind so that he would get, gain more understanding. Be with him in all that he does. Keep him safe. In Jesus' name we pray thanks you.
and how happy I am to see so many of our young people this morning. I want to wish you all the best for your new school term. Focus. Put up the phones and the tablets and so on. Now and get down into the books. Put them up until the holiday comes around again. Put your best foot forward and do your best. Okay, all the best. And may God grant you peace and safety as you travel to and from school. The rest of you, we are happy to be here with you this morning once again. The Lord be with you. Oh, um, next Sunday, no, the third Sunday is Mother's Union Sunday. Those members who are Mother's Union, kindly turn out in your uniforms. Okay? The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>